so much confusion When I made random money But so uniquely So there's our confusion Welcome back. I feel like you need to play the track. Welcome back. <laughs> Seriously, it's been... It's, it's been a minute. It's been a long, long minute. It's been a long time, but we missed each and every one of you, and we hope that you missed us too. We've been busy, 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 busy. Crazy busy. Crazy busy, but... I mean, okay, so what has happened this year in 2021, other than <laughs> complete chaos and craziness, um, but awesome stuff, awesome Amazing blessings. Amazing things. Yes. The Lord has sustained us, and I always like to say that... The world economy is going in one direction and God's economy is going in another. I know. So I'm going to just, we're just going to take a minute. We're going to say, what has God done for us? Oh, I, we don't have enough time to list everything because it'll take us a long time. But right. I mean, okay. Earlier this year, our daughter had, our daughter Leah yep. had heart yep. surgery. She had heart surgery. And she is perfectly Doing healthy. Fantastically. Yes. Surgery you, was Jesus. a success. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many things. I mean, we had COVID this year. Yes. Uh, Apparently, I, I know, you wasn't... Know, one wasn't enough for you. Once wasn't enough. <laughs> Round two. You had, we had to go for it a second time. Oh, yes. my gosh. Okay. But I'll tell you, it was a lot milder than last year when I was hospitalized for eight days with bilateral bilateral yeah. blood clots. Yes. Sure. It was kind of like a moderate man flu. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was... I mean, it was, I mean, it was a little... It was a little rough for a few days. It I, was rough bit. for a few days, but... We made it through, and I'm just grateful that you didn't get it while we were moving. For those that didn't know, we were moving. We oh moved. My. We moved. And all I have to say is I have a few I have a few thoughts about that. I'll keep them short. One, there should be maternity leave for people moving. Like, you know what I mean? Like maternity leave. Hi, you had a baby. You have some time off to recover because you're not sleeping. Yeah, Your seriously. body's doing things it normally doesn't do. There are all sorts of yeah. things you can't get. It's called... I don't know. Not how about transi- Mater- transitional Mater- leave? Okay, sure. Why not? Sure. Transitional leave. Whatever you want to call it, I'll take it. Wait a minute, but we work for ourselves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So Did let's get, let's talk to ourselves. us about some policy. <laughs> we need some policy changes. Up I'm in here. serious. I'll take it up to upper management. Because I have That's decided you. that, um, yeah, we don't own our things; they own us. Well, we did a great. <laughs> hey, anyone who has moved. You understand After five years with the, lot, with four children and a whole business. Yes, but you understand the blessing of purging. Purging. We have purged more. Of course, we always give. Okay, we always wait. give our stuff, yeah, and we don't I want know. our stuff to overtake us. It's just that when you have four children and you homeschool and you're home all the time, and yes. whew, yeah. but we and moved. True Not confessions. Just, I did have moments where I seriously entertained being an arsonist. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was like, you know what? If this that is all not goes the way. down, that is not the way. In flames, then I don't have to move it. <laughs> but instead, I stayed true to what was right and what was good, and we nearly died. I, but, want, I no. wanted a sledgehammer, some things. I'm not lying. I'm like, what? What? What is this? Now we've held on to some furniture that has made it through. Now we have moved eight times since we've been married. I know. Eight times. Well, we're we're done for we're done good, for a good we're while done. now. We we were blessed. In fact. This home is such an amazing blessing. We, we we finally bought a home, and it is, you know, our theme song. Yeah. Maverick City uh, Music. Oh, Million, M- million, million Little miracles. miracles. Oh, my gosh. That is our song. Oh, it my is. word. I would... S- I know. I have listened to that song probably a million times, but I will tell you, for those of you who feel like, I can't take that next step, I can't go another day, yeah. don't stop because you're going to miss God's yeah. blessing. I'm telling you, I know, you know, what we do for the Lord is never in vain. Yeah. And I know many times you can be overwhelmed and feel right. like this is this is going nowhere. God, what is happening? And I'll tell you, many times in our marriage, many times in this this ministry work that we've done, we have been exhausted. Yeah. You know? But I will tell you what, the the blessings overshadow the exhaustion. Yeah. Welcome so, to God's economy, right? All my life, I've been carried by grace. Don't ask me how, because I can't explain. It's nothing short of a miracle. I'm here. I think it over, and it doesn't add up. I know it comes from above. 
I've got miracles on miracles, a million little miracles. Count them one, two, three. You know, I would have sung that, but we know better. Like I, I won't sing it, but just reading those words, God's economy is different than the world's economy. He carries us by grace. And according to the world, we shouldn't have moved. We shouldn't be uh, stationed in Loudoun County, but God wants us here. Yes, he does. There's work for us to do here. And he made a way when there shouldn't have been a way. And I mean, that's, that's kind of been our life that has marked yes. so many of the, yeah. so many of the, the days and the years of our lives. And, and, you know, you mentioned Loudoun County. So for mm. those who don't know, mm. we are Loudoun County residents. Yes. We yes, are we those are. Loudoun County parents, yes. apparently that were deemed, um, terrorists, you know, because we dared to be informed and yeah. involved parents. We side yeah. with those that are, uh, written off as racist. I know. Trump supporting racists and <laughs> white supremacists. It's so re- First of all, what I love is all the articles that talk about that ignored all the black and brown people, including myself, mm-hmm. who were on these stages and these rallies. I mean, we, right. you know, Patty uh, Hidalgo Menders, G. Van Fleet, you've got Joe Mobley. I mean, these are all <laughs> incredible people who aren't white. Not that being white is wrong, because I love white. Mm-hmm. I love black. Mm-hmm. I love every hue in between. Mm-hmm. But it is it has been so ridiculous to be so demonized by mainstream media because we dare to say, hey, wait, 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 wait. Mm-hmm. Schools, parents mm-hmm. are the ones that should be leading the education. Parent-led education, not government-forced mm-hmm. indoctrination. Mm-hmm. And so we've been involved in so right. many different events here and standing with Tanner Cross. Oh, my goodness, mm-hmm. the teacher who stood up and said, look, I love my students too much to lie to them right. to call a boy a, bo- a girl and a girl a boy. Right, right. That's because, if you didn't know, at the Radiance Foundation, our heart is to speak into, I like how you say this, culture shifting issues. It's not tuck and run issues. They're issues that when we use the voice that God's given us and we speak truth into these situations, we shift culture. Oh, yeah. Because here we are in a county that wants to shift culture uh, in a way that won't glorify God, that isn't the best for families, that doesn't support families, marriages, and truth. Yeah. But we say we need to find our voice and we need to use it. And we need to know what we believe so that we shift culture yes. and that we aren't swallowed. And I'll tell you what, there was a huge shift back in November. And this, I think, is in large part due to parents who have been awakened I mean, after the elections, yes. you, you're talking about a total shift in power from Democrats, yeah. radically pro-abortion Democrats, anti-school choice Democrats, crazy gender confusion Democrats, to the GOP. But I will say this, our salvation is not from no. any political party. We say this often. Right. Our, our salvation comes from above, from Jesus. But I will tell you, it is reassuring to, to know that the parents who have been awakened, the the citizens here in this state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia that have said, you know what, enough is enough. Mm-hmm. It's encouraging to know, that, hey, it's not too far gone. So many people, right. and especially mainstream media, puts into our heads, you're outnumbered, you're right. outspent, you're, right. you're, you're a relic from the past. No, we're not. Truth is never a relic. Mm-mm. Truth Mm-mm. is constant. And I am I'm amazed this coalition of parents here who who span the political spectrum. Right. They're Democrats, independents and Republicans who have said, you know what? I am tired of what's going on in our schools. I'm tired of what, what's going on in our culture. It's damaging. It's destructive. It's toxic. And there's been a shift. Right. And with that being said, we're still not done. Oh, definitely not, not done. It's not time to get sleepy again. Yeah. Um, but this is this is our opportunity to see that when Christians pray, that God answers. And this has been another huge answer to prayer. Yes. Huge. What has happened, what we've seen in this election, didn't happen by chance. In the same way, the things that we're combating didn't happen by chance. Right. There was a very pointed agenda that moved things and behind the scenes worked very hard to make sure that the books that got on the shelves in our school district got there, that this entire ideology was was put in place. But when people pray, when Christians pray, the Lord listens and he moves his hand. Absolutely. It's the first resort and the last resort. 
And, and in between. Dude, <laughs> seriously, it is. Thank you, Jesus. There's so many encouraging things. I mean, look what's happening at the Supreme Court with Dobbs v. Jackson. I mean, right. historic abortion case out of Mississippi, the 15-week yes. abortion ban. I am so encouraged. And in fact, <laughs> the yeah. pro-abortion left is scrambling. They're in panic mode. You know what? The devil is in panic mode. Right. And I love when I see that and when mm-hmm. I hear that. But again, we can't let our guard down. No. I mean, that's why we... have we, to see these things followed through. Right. Perpetual prayer. We cannot stop. Right. There's so much good going on. Yeah. And this is a time of year where, you know, a lot of good is actually highlighted and we need yes. to highlight those things. I love that, you know, this is the time of year where people are even more generous than any other time of the year. Mm-hmm. Of course, generosity can happen, you know, 365, 24-7, mm-hmm. but it's a beautiful thing. And the reason for that is the most generous thing, the most generous gift we've ever been given. Yeah is Jesus Christ. And look, he came in the midst of a very dark night, in the midst of a culture that was very dark, that wasn't welcoming to the King of Kings. And here we are, folks, in a dark culture that doesn't feel very welcoming to the God that we represent. But he came anyway, and he changed the world. I love, we were talking about this this morning. You were talking about how even in the womb, he changed the world. That the people that he affected, even while in utero, he changed lives. Right. That's what he does. It's his nature. Yeah. And so we celebrate this Christmas, the God of light who came in the midst of the darkness. Right. A humanly unplanned mm-hmm. parenthood yeah. that changed everything. And I say that because... Uh, I specifically and deliberately didn't say pregnancy. Yes. Of course, obviously that's what happened. But I want to focus just on the parenthood, on the two individuals who enable the Savior of the world yeah. to be able to fulfill his purpose. Yes. You were going to say I was something. just going to say that a lot of people have taken issue when we talk about it's an unplanned pregnancy. So I just <laughs> quickly want to Im- input in this spot. It was always divinely planned. Always. It was just not humanly part of the plan that Mary knew was going to happen. All she knew is that she was called to be obedient, to love God with all of her heart. And the result of that obedience was that she was going to be in shock when she learned that she was pregnant with a savior. But still in her, in her timeline, she wasn't expecting this to happen. She didn't see this playing out this way. I don't believe. No, but she consented. But the she people consented. confuse consent with plan. Like our children, for instance, can consent, mm-hmm. although they don't really have much of a say, but they can consent to, you know, a vacation plan. Hey, we're going to go here. They had nothing to do with the planning itself. They're just mm-hmm. agreeing to go along with it. And so people confuse consent with actual involvement in planning. That's our point. Joseph didn't plan it. Mary didn't plan it. God did. God did from the beginning oh my of time. Yes. And I love it. And I and I love the fact that we're talking a baby caused the world this the seismic shift. Yes. A baby. I mean kings came from from yes. all over to honor yes. this baby that they 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 heard about, they knew about that was foretold. Mm. Oh, I love this. This is why so the enemy reasons wants so badly to take the lives of even yes. the unborn. Yes. He understands the purpose and he understands and the promise. Yeah. yeah. The promise that that the the that those that follow God carry. Now we are not Jesus. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is he's watched as history has unfolded the defeat even by a baby. Oh yeah. I mean but throughout scripture we're we're taught we're told about the purpose that is within us. We're, we're told, you know, in Psalm 139, one of my favorite chapters, mm-hmm. you know, he created my innermost being. All of our days were ordained before they came to be. God had purpose for each mm-hmm. and every one of us. We are all divinely planned. Yes. We have to just make those choices whether or not we're going to accept and embrace yes. God's purpose for our lives. And that's why we have, well, why we should have, by God's design, a mother and a father who, who unleash that. I understand that there are single parents out of there, and I understand that there are circumstances. We know all that. We've been through all that. Trust and we're me. we're cheerleading for those that yes. aren't. But, but that's not our point. Our point is that. God designed purpose to be unleashed in a in, child. In a family unit. Through the involvement of a parent. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at the, the greatest, truest story ever told, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it took 
parents to understand, hey, God, this is your calling. I accept it. Mm. And they ran with it. Yes. In a dark culture that literally wanted them dead and a crazed king <laughs> right. wanted that baby dead. And, and yet and, in the midst of all that, the revelation of God came, whether through angels, whether through dreams, God doesn't just leave us hanging out there when he says, are you going to be obedient to me? He meets that obedience with his blessing and his revelation. And I love that the word says that it's like a light into our feet, a lamp into our path. He illuminates what's the next step, what's the next step. And so when Joseph had to get up and get moving, the Lord gave him that revelation because Joseph's ear was inclined to what the Lord was saying. Yeah. And the Lord will keep us, right, going through that valley of the shadow of death, through we go through it. It's just a shadow when we follow him and when we're obedient. It's so powerful. And I love that we get to just convey this to our children, have them understand just the depth of this. There's so many incredible dynamics to the, the story of Christ, yes. of God coming down to earth, of him giving his only son. Ooh, so much. Yes. In fact, speaking of kids, we have the bombs, the little bombs. <laughs> In fact, they're not so little anymore. How do, how do we come back without them? I know. I, I know. Well, we're going to come back. After this this brief yes. little break, we are going to have our whole fam come back, and they're going to talk about the things that we love. Yes. The things that they love about Christmas. Uh, Aaliyah's going to sing. Okay. On the show. Mm-hmm. And uh, a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, you're listening Stay to Life tuned. is Purpose with Bethany and Ryan Bomberger. Let's do that. And speaking of our kids, uh, they're going to be on the show, like, in a minute, right? Because <laughs> it wouldn't be complete without the little nope. bombs. Can't come back without them. But they're not little anymore. No, they're so big. They're ridiculously big. Wow, they keep growing. <sighs> they keep we have to growing, keep feeding them and stuff. Anyway. ideas and wanting to be independent. Oh, uh, yeah. Independence is a beautiful thing. Uh, except when mom and dad say, <laughs> you're going to do what you're going to do. But anyway, we got the bombs coming, yes. you know, Aaliyah and Ray Ray and Jess and Kai. And they're going to be here in the studio. And they're going to talk about the things, what, that they love. Right. Things that are special about Christmas. Yeah. Some of their favorite things. We'll see what comes up and we'll just run with it. Yeah, we'll run with it. And Aaliyah's going to sing on the show and, and a little bit more. You're listening to Life is Purpose with Ryan and, and Bethany Bomber. Bomber. Hi, I'm Justice. I'm Justice, too. Hi, I'm Joseph. And I'm for life because every life has a reason. I'm for life because everybody is wonderfully made. I'm for life because God made us special. Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. ProLifeKids.com! The Radiance Foundation illuminates that every human life has purpose. We educate hundreds of thousands about crucial social issues, and we motivate people to positive action. Truth won't take a vacation. That's why we need your generous donation. Tax deductible, stuff is acceptable. Your gifts make illumination possible. Truth won't take a vacation. And here's our little explanation. Defending human dignity never ends. That's why we depend on you, my friend. Go to radiance.life slash donate to make your tax-deductible donation. Thank you for supporting our life-affirming work. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, it's our favorite time. Guess who's back in the studio? Yay, that's all of us. Oh, and us, yeah. Hi! (laughs) We're back. Merry Christmas. We have um, the little bombs, as we mentioned. They have grown a whole lot, so they're they're not so little, but they will always be our baby boys and baby girls. This is how it works. But we love this time of year. I know. I think collectively we can easily say that the Bombergers love Christmas. What do you think, guys? Yes. 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 Better than Leprechaun Day. 
holiday. What? what? That would be St. Patrick's Day, but <laughs> oh. okay, let's okay. go back to anyway, Christmas. Back to Christmas. So Christmas time. First of all, the most important reason for Christmas is what? it's Jesus's birthday, or yeah. around the time of Jesus. Right. Birthday. We right. celebrate and, and when Jesus did, came to earth. Right. And why did Jesus come to earth? To save us all from save our sins. sins. There you have it. Mm-hmm. But we have some great and fun traditions. So we're going to kind of go around the little round robin here, starting with the oldest, Ray Ray. Tell us what one of your favorite Christmas traditions that we do. My favorite Christmas tradition is watching the first Noel with this, this old little animated like 25 minute movie thing that we watch every Christmas Eve. I know all many years ago, my one of my good friends TT Joy Sent us this sweet little DVD, which now it's not even. I don't, babe. I don't it's think it's in production. Print. It's yep, from Exclaim Entertainment, and it's so, so you can go to YouTube cute. and you can find it. But we love it. The animation's just incredible. It's an awesome way of telling the story, and it's just fun. And yeah, I love it because Christmas it was TV. a tradition that was kind of happened. It just was sort of birthed right. out of every year we'd come home yeah. from church and we'd end up watching it. Okay, so that's Yay, your favorite one. Well, let's memory, go. Let's jump memory. to Kai. Kai, which one of your favorite traditions? My favorite Christmas tradition. I mean, it's not completely a tradition. We do it pretty much every year. Okay, so that's, that's technically that's a, a tradition. <laughs> that would be a tradition. <laughs> yeah. So, um, every morning before we go downstairs and open gifts and everything, and sit around the tree and eat breakfast, which it's it's great every year. Thank you, mom eat and dad. <laughs> yeah, before we do that. No, 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 no. Before we do that, we. Take a video of us doing, we just having fun on the stairs, doing whatever. Because <laughs> you're um, waiting. Yeah, you're we, waiting we're waiting. Waiting. yeah. It's okay. Waiting it's okay for to us wait. to get everything it's perfect. Though. There's we're this not thing. Perfect. Just up, ready. Though. Just ready. There's this thing. Dad and I don't like to get up at 5 or 6 a.m. anymore mm-hmm. now that you guys are older. That's because we're up until 2 rapping. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Gangsta True story. rapper. Yeah. Well, since our youngest is now 11, it's really okay if. Um, we don't have to get up at the break of dawn, but it does mean that you guys end up waiting. Yeah. And we've had some of the best videos from the time. You see, I'm it's saying. actually part of a, it's like a good parenting thing. We're breaking out the creativity in you. What are you going to do when you can't wait to get downstairs, but you are banned from stepping all the way down those stairs? <laughs> Sleep. And so it teaches you patience. It gives you endurance. I mean, and these creativity. are good things. These are good videos, and I Merry love that Christmas. it's turned into a tradition. <laughs> okay, next one. Who we got? Aaliyah. What's Hello. one of your favorite traditions? Okay, so. What ah. one of my favorite traditions is probably doing our Christmas photo shoot. I think have we already said this? No. Okay, good. Yeah. Our Christmas photo shoot every Christmas Eve when we get home from um from Christmas Eve Christmas service. Eve service. Yeah. I, was to, I was gonna say Sunday <laughs> That's service. What we do, yeah. When we get home from Christmas Eve service, we unwrap matching pajamas and we do a whole photo shoot. And it's really fun, although sometimes it takes a couple hours. But in the end, we get really fun pictures. Yeah, and they are so adorable. But you guys are just so cute in these pajamas. I mean, Aww, we started this, you. babe. Actually, that was you who started this when they were just like little cute little. I mean, you're still cute, but little, little cute peanuts. little ones, and they we're, were not just exactly little yeah. anymore. No, yeah. but you used to be from newborn, and then you'd find we'd find the cutest little matching pajamas, and then I would say, "Oh, I'm not going to do this anymore." But every year, I. I find really good bargains on really good outfits, and we end up looking adorable and yeah. all, on all matchy matchy. So don't ever think that you're going to be too old to be matchy matchy with all of us on Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's only Christmas. I mean, I know you guys, you know, grew out of your matchy matchy phase as like, the boy that <laughs> is looking at me right now. Like, do you remember that? All the weddings and all the, yes, <laughs> yes. All the parties. It was like, fun oh, though. I'm an individual. Okay, so that was awesome. I love that tradition. So let's go We're to up the to youngest. Justice. Go ahead, Jess. My favorite what's tradition, your favorite what's oh, your favorite bud my favorite tradition is probably either decorating the tree or doing the gingerbread houses mm-hmm. but we haven't oh. done the gingerbread houses this year that's true well you know what not and yet. You, you know what just you were saying this when we decorated the tree the other day and I asked you um I don't remember I think we were in the car and you said that you love decorating the tree together which is super sweet this year I was like can we just bring two bins of things in to decorate. And so it was like the miracle of Christmas. I sat on the couch and read trivia, and in under an hour, we actually decorated the tree. Unfortunately, all those little cute ornaments from when you were little aren't hanging on the tree this year. So unfortunate. But, 
But we enjoyed our time, and, and it was wonderful. And we know how many reindeer were in the, in the phone <laughs> eight. thing. And there were eight, eight little your reindeer. Mom choosing to do trivia, you now know the facts, <laughs> random <laughs> facts about Christmas. all things Christmas. Mm-hmm. Oh, you remember that one? That's so cute. That's awesome. Yeah, we 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 do have a lot of fun traditions, and I I love each and every one of them. But I think for me, well, you know what? Actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to jump to you. No, you go ahead. Oh, I'm going to go ahead. It. Yeah. Okay. Well, all the ones that you guys have said, I love all those things. Um, I really love just spending Christmas Day together. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we'll even go back and we love looking at some of the old photos because we have, I think, like 200,000 photos in digital <laughs> limbo. But yeah. we get to go back and look at some of those things. We get to talk about um, the blessings um, throughout Christmas, and we just get to enjoy each other and understand that the presents are great, yes, but the blessings all year round are are even better. But I, I love just that time and then the food. Okay, I really do love the food. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> it's true, it's true. I was like, wait, my third helping? I don't know. There's something about Christmas Day, though. It doesn't matter. Calories don't count, and you can keep going back and eating the cookies and the desserts. Mom's and the- apple turkey. crisp oh. dump cake oh, thing. Oh, yes. my gosh. Oh. Oh Yay. my goodness. So good. I love that. You love that. Smoked ham, smoked turkey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yum. So deliciousness. Good. Mm-hmm. Stuffing. I, I Conquering stuffing. delicious stuffing. And, I, you know, we do so much travel that the last few years we've decided that's it. We just aren't going to travel. So that right. you're right. It, it makes it wonderful. And when you guys were little, you would get new toys. And I think it would be the quietest day of the year <laughs> in the sense that we could literally sit there and chill and chill. And you guys would just spend the day playing with your right. new toys. So that is really neat. One of my favorite traditions has been going to church on Christmas Eve. Yep. And um, it's just like an hour-long service, but it's always special. It always feels just feels magical. And always figuring out, um, you know, trying to get there early because it's usually earlier in the evening. But I love spending that time together. Yeah, And it really... I mean, we we love church. We go to church as a family. That's a, that's very important. But it just feels different on Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's definitely different. One, I love being there with our family. But there's also our extended church family. Right. Right. And you right. guys have all your friends, mm-hmm. youth group, and all that. So, yeah, it, it feels like family. And, and it just feels family different. just, mm-hmm. there's just something so powerful when we follow God's design. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I love that you wrote this amazing op-ed about the unplanned parenthood. So why don't you share that with us and then we'll come back and we will talk more Christmas and sing a little bit. Yeah, sounds good. You're listening to Life Has Purpose with Ryan and Bethany Bomber and the kids. kids. (laughs) Life Has Purpose. Listen download and subscribe at lifehaspurpose.com or on apple podcasts spotify stitcher or soundcloud every week ryan's articles appear on various news outlets each week will feature one of his latest commentaries it's time for some fearless factivism a humanly unplanned parenthood changed the world imagine waking up to find that your wife is pregnant and you had nothing to do with it And then an angel appeared to you telling you that she carried the hope of humanity within her and you were to name him Jesus. This could never have been part of any foreseeable plan for a newly married man. How would he cope with a pregnant wife in a marriage that had not yet been consummated? In a culture of undeniable and real gender inequality, where women were horribly stoned for adultery, he could have divorced her and publicly shamed her. Imagine, your young virgin bride who has yet to intimately know your husband, and you're told by an angel that you have been chosen to carry the Savior of the world within your womb. She didn't plan this, but her consent triggered events that would radically change her life, her husband's life, and the world. How would she explain this miraculous conception to her husband? How could she even accept that something like this was even possible? She could have chosen to reject it all. She could have justified it because the timing wasn't ideal or felt that their material poverty was sufficient reason not to bring a child into this world. But she decided to be stronger than her circumstances. Mary and Joseph lived in a violent culture under Roman rule where infanticide was a common practice. A ruthless appointed king of the Jews, King Herod, was furious at the prospect of their child becoming the king of kings. 
Herod was a deeply unstable man who had his own family members, including his wife and firstborn son, and many others killed. He was so threatened by what the life of this humanly unplanned but divinely planned child represented that he ordered all male children two years of age and younger in Bethlehem and the surrounding areas to be slaughtered. With God's divine intervention, Mary and Joseph escaped the brutality of a foolish ruler hell-bent on destroying the Son of God. A devoted husband and his courageous wife had to trust each other and trust the Lord that he would guide them through this earthly, unchartered journey. Their lives had purpose. Their unborn son's life had purpose. Mary saw motherhood as a gift, not a burden. She embraced it despite all of the unknowns. And Joseph could have chosen abandonment over fatherhood, but he chose adoption instead. What an illustration of how fathers matter even when the bond isn't biological. In fact, in Matthew 1, the genealogy of Christ doesn't lead to Mary, it leads to Joseph, because God intended for the greatest story ever told to be a redemptive and courageous story of adoption. Courage unleashes miracles. This Christmas, may we be reminded of the faith and vulnerability that is required in our own journeys. May we never forget that Christmas is the beginning of God's love story for us and completed in the ultimate act of selfless love. Christ's self-sacrifice on the cross and miraculous resurrection. May we know in a deeply personal way how much God loves us enough to offer eternal salvation and the opportunity to be strong through Him, even in our weaknesses. Merry Christmas. I'm Ryan Bomberger, and you're listening to the Life Has Purpose podcast. To read this article, go to radiance.life slash unplanned. Babe, thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, babe. And you know, I think it's a perfect time to just lead into Aaliyah. Do you want to sing a little something? I know we talked about it. Okay, sure. All right. Why don't you do one of my favorites, Silent Night? How do you feel about that? Just just sing a little something, something. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. Aaliyah here we go. Marie. Silent Night. Oh. Awesome. Thank Girl. you guys. Come thank on. you guys. That was amazing. Damn. That was pretty good. <laughs> thank you. Ouch, but thank you. Thank you, Joss. That, that was that was over the top. You had to hold back. Hold yourself back. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, we always love hearing the gifts and the talents that God has given each All of you. All of you. In yeah, so many different, different ways. ways. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I know we should, the same thing. R&B, we should get married or something. Wait, we oh, are married. God. All right. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Well, we've right. got our kiddos here who just, I guess, it's, got, got some, like, I don't know, parting thoughts. I don't some know. Things that you just like to share We're with We're just going to put you on the spot. Encouragement. What, what, what can you say to our listeners? I hope all of you and your families have a Merry Christmas. Yes. All right. All right. That sounds good. The youngest. Go ahead, Jess. I, oh. He's going to think about it. Uh, okay. We're <laughs> moving on to somebody else. What do you, oh. what do you, what do you got to say, Elia? Um, to everyone listening, I hope y'all have a great Christmas and know that Jesus loves you. All right. Mm-hmm. I like that. Kai's deep thoughts. Dang. Uh, you got some, right? God blesses everyone. <laughs> okay. The wise words of Stuart Little. Oh, okay. It was Tiny, Tiny Tim, Tim. Tiny. not Stuart Little. Oh <laughs> Stuart God. Little was a mouse. Chicken oh. Little was a chicken. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyways, all right. All right. Back, Justice, back right. to you. Come on. Youngest, you got some wisdom in there, buddy. You have got? peace in the new year. Okay. Beautiful. And Christ is the Prince of Peace. peace. Oh. So that's good. All right. I will take peace. That was a good word. I'll yeah. take it. In the midst of all the chaos, God's gift to us is his peace. Yeah. 
and there's a whole lot of chaos and confusion in our society right now. So yeah, the best gift of all, of course, is the gift of Jesus Christ who came to rescue and redeem us. So right. and to save us from our sins. Yes. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yes. Everybody. And from the bombs. We love you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. Awesome. All right. There we go. Take care. Till next time. God bless us, everyone. Hey, we'd love to know what you think of the podcast. Go to lifehaspurpose.com and give us your feedback. You can also listen and download our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, or SoundCloud. Remember, whatever may come your way. And no matter what people say, your your life life has purpose. purpose.